So I am thrilled by the dream team we have to support that today. Please welcome David Fields, Lele, Eric Weiner, Nicholas Kokolo, and Sam Ewan, my colleague at CoinDesk. Thank you. Look at all these humans. This is very exciting. Raise your hand if you're an agent. <laughs> all right, we got a couple. Love them. I'll try to speak in binary for you. Um, what a wonderful panel. I'm very excited to be able to, to moderate this with uh, these four brilliant people. I'm going to learn a lot. Uh, I'm Sam Newman from Coindesk. I have the innovation practice, so I'm going to take a lot of notes on what we're talking about today. But I would love, Lele, let's start with you. Um, just give us the 20 second who you are, and then we'll go down the panel. Sure. Um, really great to, to see everyone. I, I love Toronto. Um, so I'm Lele. I'm a VP and head of uh, business development at Kite AI. Uh, Kite AI is an AI layer one focused on building an open marketplace for uh, agents, models, and data. And myself, I come from more of a TradFi background. I've worked in Wall Street for over 10 years and came to the blockchain space about five years ago. Hey, I'm Eric Weiner. I'm the CTO of Near AI. Near AI is kind of an offshoot of the Near Protocol L1. Uh, we're focused on building a framework for uh, AI agent hosting, for agents to talk to other agents, transact, pay, and the uh, app layer on top of that. Hi, I'm David Fields. I'm co founder and CEO at Ready AI. We're focused on structuring all the world's data and making it universally accept, uh, accessible to AI. And we're built on BitTensor, one of the leading crypto AI protocols. Hi, I'm Nicholas Kokalis. I am the, one of the co-founders uh, of Pi Network and building the technology. Uh, Pi Network is uh, a social network with tens of millions of uh, people with its own embedded uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, people have been uh, mining it for the last uh, uh, six, more than six uh, years now. They've been using it, they have been uh, creating apps. And uh, one uh, unique feature about uh, Pi is that every uh, account on the blockchain, before it's uh, activated, it needs to pass uh, identity verification. All right, so what I want to start with, and again, you can give me a really short answer, is in, in the worlds that each of you are playing, within the infra side and in AI, you know, I wanted you to give me kind of the analogous place we are in the technology spectrum, right? So if we think of YouTube and streaming video, are we are we still in the VHS era when it when it comes to what we're doing? So uh, Nick, let's let's start with you. Oh wow! So <laughs> that's a good question. So I think that. Uh, Every time in history, there's uh, technologies that are being invented, and uh, then there's a little bit of lag and a little bit of time uh, between when they are invented and uh, they are actually being massively used. So that's where we are with uh, uh, Gen AI. So uh, especially uh, with the generative AI, and AI in general, uh, there has been a leap forward, a breakthrough in what the models can achieve. Um, and uh, now is the time to build uh, great apps and great products. In the same way that, uh, you know, when electricity was uh, created, not every house had it, not every industrialization wasn't there, or the, when the combustion engine was there, not everyone had a car, what was the exact uh, uh, product was not really known. So that's where we are right now. It's an exciting time to live. All right, we're at the combustion engine. Nicholas, the, the Pi Network has millions of people. We found this out the, the hard way when, when we were announcing your panel. They went crazy. Um, I don't know how many of them are synthetic. I don't know how many of them are real. But in dealing with the, with the vast numbers that you're dealing with, are you worried that at some point it kind of goes out of control where, where this massive group mass starts to do the things that it wants to do, whether you want it or not. Yeah, that's a problem uh, 
challenge not only for Pi but uh, for the world going forward because uh, uh, now with generative AI it's becoming less and less easy to distinguish the real human from uh, uh, AI. It used to be pretty AI used to be pretty dumb, you can tell immediately, but now it's not that easy. So um, I uh, opted for uh, following a unique uh, approach, which was to KYC every single individual using uh, identity verification, turning your head left and right, and uh, all that, uh, all that uh, stuff. And, and we think that uh, this uh, approach is, uh, very, is going to be very useful, especially in the future, uh, when you want to distinguish between uh, a thousand fake bots and a thousand real people. Uh, especially in a world where you want to be able to meritocratically and fairly uh, distribute value uh, or um, other applications like this, uh, you need to be able to uh, identify who is uh, human and who is not. I mean, Nicholas, when, when, when you're talking to the Pi Army and, and, and they're, they're vocal, are they vocal about decentralization or are they vocal about Pi? <laughs> so I think that uh, in general, when uh, we're thinking of decentralization and AI, um, and there, there is another aspect. There is, a, of course, the technical challenges and how we can embed this into technology, how we can do the training, how we can um, distribute uh, the reports. But uh, there is also uh, the concept of um, value capture. So in a future where more and more work is done by agents and by AI, um, it, it is important to make sure that uh, the, the value is not only captured by a few individuals or a few companies. And it can be captured by a large uh, number of people. And that's where blockchain and our projects can uh, come to play. Uh, and uh, the founders uh, of those projects and the people who are working on it uh, need to uh, come to think about uh, how, the, how blockchain uh, can uh, help uh, with the value capture. Um, running out of time, my last question relates exactly to what you said, and I want to get each of your opinion on it. Uh, to me, stablecoins, agents, this is the future of commerce on the internet. Like, there's, there's no doubt in my mind about that. So, how do you guys look at this idea of balancing out how we can build systems that allow for smooth and easy payments uh, at the micro level, and know that the, the traditional financial system also says, no, what about all of our fees? Right? We want those back. But we, we are reinventing a new way of commerce, a new way of engaging with each other. So just give us you know, final thoughts to start with you, Nicholas, on what it means to bring agents, stable coins, decentralized AI, AI networks together and build the absolute future. Um, you have 30 seconds. Okay. So I think that uh, yeah, I will take this as follows. I will say that uh, people need to build great apps, great products. Once you have a great product, you will trump everything else. And in order, and, and and in order for you to do this, you need to have a lot of trials, a lot of work. And today is a great time for with generative AI, where there's a lot more people who can create uh, and try products. So um, uh, networks that have a lot of people uh, will naturally be able to have a competitive advantage in being able to uh, empowering them and uh, creating a lot of uh, different products and a lot of different values. So by having value, eventually, you're going to convince uh, Everyone else, David. Yes, I mean, kind of going back to the internet in, in the mid '90s analogy. You know, I think that stable coins has really been a foundation that's been laid now for a decade plus. I mean, it's um, a core piece of technology in the agentic system that I think that decade was was really critical for. Uh, so I think you're going to see, uh, you know, an explosion in AI agents um, over, you know, the, the next couple of years, and you know, figuring out the right transition to like fully autonomous agents outside of, you know, kind of 
control and authorization will be interesting. And there'll be blow ups, but I think it's going to be really exciting for the next couple, or a couple years. Eric, agents, payments? Oh. Yeah, I mean, I think payments are a, a, like under of the core so much of what we're trying to get at here. Um, what we're trying to build, we call it an AITP, which is our, our agent interaction and transaction protocol. That's how agents can pass structured data to their agents. But that includes payment instructions. Um, and we think the way that that can succeed is, uh, first of all, like don't think of it as um, just crypto payments. Build in all the features of fiat payments, uh, rewards, credit, dispute resolution, all done via AI. Um, and things you can't do in the fiat world, like uh, revenue share and affiliate revenue that hits everybody along the path of whoever made that transaction possible, even if it's a quarter of a cent's worth. Um, that gets everybody incentivized to move from the fiat rails onto the, the, the crypto or the stable point rails. I think that's, um, and so like, you know, then you build from there, you start to convince those AIs to move on to the AITP or whatever the crypto payment rail is going to be. Did I bring it home? Sure. Um, so agents, stable point, right? Uh, and enterprise. So first of all, I think uh, partnering with enterprises is key because they have the mass distribution service and they always think about building in a sustainable way. Um, revenue is not bad. And that's something that the whole industry does need to really work towards. Um, I think you know, a way to position charging fees is, you know, there's a there's always a way to have some type of uh, fee split or revenue share or, you know, a way to give back to uh, the users that are uh, using the levels. Uh, single point for us. All right. Well, that's all the time we have. Thank you all so much for this. It was, it was wonderful. Thank you. For